Login authorized. Welcome. Access granted. Welcome to our last lesson of our sermon series, Hooked. And no, this has not been a series about pirates, but this series has been about fishing, fishermen, uh, nets, and the wide open metaphorical sea. And uh, man, this has been an awesome series. I thank each and every one of you all for joining uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Listen, our foundational scripture uh, for this sermon series was found in Matthew chapter four, verse 19. And Jesus said, come follow and I will send you out to fish for people. So far, this whole series, man, if you have not been with us, you need to go back and check out uh, all three lessons uh, in this series, man, it has been awesome because so far, uh, we talked about the kingdom net. We've talked about the invitation to salvation, to follow Christ. And we also have learned, and we now know, excuse me, that the kingdom net represents the gospel or the good news. And it is the invitation to salvation, not just for the Jews, not just for Gentiles, not just for this ethnicity, uh, this particular culture, not for just for the rich, not just for the poor, but it is for everybody. Are y'all with me? And so as fishers of people, as Jesus stated in Matthew four and verse 19 uh, and followers of Christ, we are ultimately striving to reach this particular goal. What is it, Pastor K? We want everybody, we want everyone to get hooked, not on drugs, not on alcohol. I need you to get hooked on Jesus. And like the apostle Paul says, uh, when he, uh, was writing, uh, to his young apprentice, Timothy, he writes in first Timothy chapter two, verse four, Paul says, God wants all people, not some, not a particular. He says, all, what is all? Everything, everybody, it includes everybody, all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. Hello, somebody. And, and if you want God, and if, and excuse me, if God wants Everybody saved. If he wants all people saved, what does this mean for us as fishermen of people? What does this mean, Pastor K, for us as anglers for Christ? 
as we follow him? How far will the journey take us? And how committed are we to spreading this kingdom net to the furthest reaches of humanity? So you see, as we prepare to wrap up our sermon series today, I'm excited to tackle these questions and leave you with some incredible encouragement straight from the mouth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So get ready. Y'all know how I do. You know how I roll. Get your pens, get your notepad, something to write on, something to write with. And let's take some applicable notes. What are, what's applicable notes, Pastor K? It's simply this, notes that you're going to apply to your daily life, All right? So let's take some applicable notes and let's dive into today's lesson. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right, listen, amazingly, Jesus told the first disciples that it was better for him to leave them rather than to stay and hang out and minister with them. But you see, in the Gospel of John, according to John chapter 16 and verse 7, Jesus is recorded as saying this. Jesus says, nevertheless, man, there are a lot of words in the vocabulary that are encouraging. There are a lot of words in, in the dictionary that you can find that's uplifting and motivating. But when you run across this word, nevertheless, the less and you run across Jesus speaking it out of his mouth. Jesus says, never the less. What does that mean? Pastor K nevertheless, Jesus says, in spite of what you going through, in spite of what you've been through, in spite of what you're doing, in spite of what you're not doing, in spite of it all, Jesus says, nevertheless, in spite of, I tell you the truth, literally, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper or the Holy Spirit will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Hello, somebody. Nevertheless, in spite of what's going on in the world today, the Holy Spirit is here on the scene. We live in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. And as we now know, Jesus was referring to the Holy Spirit. And also we'll find in our central passage uh, of scripture that we're going to read today that Jesus elaborates even further about this divine helper. The disciples were about to receive according to the book of acts or what i call the book of actions or the actions of the apostles uh found in acts chapter 1 verse 8 so listen if you got your bibles uh you got your bible app ready then let's get into it turn with me if you will to acts chapter 1 and verse 8 when you get there this is where what you should see depending on your translation but when you get there, let's harvest the word of God together. And it reads, but you will receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses to tell people all about me. You're going to be my witnesses to tell the people all about me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. If I was to title our lesson today, I would simply title this lesson, The Ends of the Earth. This is lesson three in our Hooked series. Jesus says that you are supposed to be a witness from Judea, Jerusalem, Samaria. He says, you're supposed to take my gospel. You're supposed to witness about who I am and what I've done and what I can do, even to the people at the ends of the earth, wherever you find yourself. 
Jesus is saying that the spirit, the Holy Spirit will empower you to be a witness for him. And that word witness, it conveys the idea that the, that the disciples uh, were able to give testimony of who Jesus was and what Jesus did even back then and what he's still doing today. And not just to a few people, but literally the disciples, the apostles, the chosen ones that he called, the 12 that he appointed, the, the, the 12 that was not so polished, not so perfect people. Uh-huh. You had folks like cussing Peter. Oh, y'all don't hear me. You have people like the degreed up, fully degreed, uh, the apostle Paul. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. You have people like the adulterous Mary who was about to be stoned to death. These were ordinary people. These wasn't some special type of people who uh, didn't do no wrong, didn't have no wrong. No, it was the fact that people had ostracized, criticized. People was uh, shift blaming uh, them and pointing out their flaws, but was uh, neglecting the flaws of themselves. Oh, y'all with me today. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? They was ministering to others and they ministered to others who were close to them, near them, and even those who were far away from them. You see, the kingdom net can stretch to the very ends of the earth where every last person, where every last human being on this planet needs to hear the gospel, the good news, and be extended the invitation to salvation. For you see, when Jesus says in Acts chapter one and verse eight, when he tells the disciples that you will be my witness to tell people all about me in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth, this is really, let me expand on Acts, the, 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 the book of Acts. Cause you see, uh, in Acts chapter one, verse eight, here is, uh, put this in your notes. This is a geographical outline, uh, of what transpires and goes on in the rest of the book of Acts. For you see in Acts chapters one through seven, uh, they correspond to the, the disciples to witness in Jerusalem. In Acts chapters 8 through 12, it corresponds for the disciples to witness in Judea and Samaria. Then in Acts chapter 13 through 28, it corresponds to the disciples witnessing and taking the gospel, the good news to the ends of the earth. Put this in your notes, HTC, write this down, uh, close, near, and far for you see it was a more personal call to bear witness about christ and share the good news with those immediately around them those who are close you see jerusalem would have been their city and it would have included their neighbors the local bakery uh the local coffee shop uh the butcher the banker are y'all following me are you with me today so think about this uh, and think about your neighbors. Think about your favorite uh, coffee shop. Maybe it's Starbucks. Maybe it's Dunkin Donuts. Uh, uh, think about your local grocery store. And, and when you think about these places, think about the people that you encounter. These are the people that are close to you, including your family that lives in your house. These are the people in your immediate sphere of influence. The Bible tells us that everyone has a sphere of influence. We have a group of people that we can talk to, that we can uh, get on a level. We can reach them. We can help them. There are people that, uh, that are in your sphere of influence that I can't reach, but with your help, Oh, y'all don't hear me with your help. 
by you hitting that share button, by you uh, uh, sending them to our YouTube channel and by you uh, witnessing to them, we can do this together. And so everybody has an immediate sphere of influence. And these are the first places where you can think of to spreading the net and extending the gospel invitation of salvation to others. Judea and Samaria, they were neighboring cities. Kind of like where I live, it would be like Chesapeake Beach and North Beach. They ain't even, uh, they ain't even a mile apart, I don't think. But, but it, it, it's so quick to jump out of Chesapeake Beach and jump over into North Beach because uh, uh, we're neighboring cities. We are the twin beaches. That's what they call us here. And you, you see, these people uh, who were in Judea and Samaria, they were neighboring cities and, and, they, and, and they had people groups. And the people, uh, they were about a day's journey, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, but it was about a day's journey or so from Jerusalem. And so this is the level of people who are, or what we call the near. Uh-huh. You have, you have the close who is right up on you. Then you have the near who are like your neighboring cities, your neighboring areas, your neighboring communities. This is the level of people who are near to you that a gospel that need a gospel invitation to salvation uh, presented to them. So think about the places where you go uh, when you travel. Think about the domestic missions trips that you've served on. Think about the nonprofit groups that serve cities outside of your own city or they uh, serve causes and help the cause that's important to you. If you can't personally uh, volunteer, if you can't personally be involved in some shape, size and form, how can you support these groups in their efforts? Well, you can simply commit to giving. You can devote yourself to prayer, cover them in prayer. And finally, we have uh, we go from being close, near and now we are going far and the ends of the earth. It represents or it is the representatives of people who are way out of your average reach, different countries, different continents, different ethnicities. Are y'all following me? Different types of groups. These are people who also need an invitation to salvation. And it might not be face to face, but it could be through some international mission group or it could be done through a nonprofit organization. These are the people who you and I have already been empowered to witness. We are all very different in our passions. We are all different. Uh, we have different causes uh, that we uh, act upon and that moves us to action. Our differences are so beautiful and God given, but it is also important for us to remember that we have the same goal in participating in spreading the good news and spreading the gospel net. Put this in your notes, HTC. Uh, we have different we have different gifts, but the same goal. What are you saying, Pastor K? What do you mean that we have different gifts, but we have the same goal? Well, have you ever thought how life would be so much easier if, ev if everybody in the world was just like you? Maybe you like me. Maybe you thought the opposite. Maybe, maybe you've had that opposite revelation that life would be so bland. And so blah, if everybody was flavorless, if everybody was the same, put this in your notes, HTC diversity, it is reality. And it's not just a tiny thing, but it is a God ordained and designed 
fact of life. A fact that is that that God has designed or intended to be a blessing and not a curse. You are immersed in diversity every single day of your life. You look different than others. You think different than everybody else. You feel differently. You respond differently. And it is all for the glory of God. Listen, check out what the Apostle Paul, that tenacious tent maker from the city of Tarsus, he has to say when uh, he writes to the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 7. Paul goes on and says that there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit is the source of them all. You may have a gift uh, to, to a creative gift in art where I have a different gift. It's in the, it's in art, but I might not draw. I might be able to speak. I might be able to uh, uh, elaborate the feeling behind your artwork. Are y'all hearing me? We have different gifts, talents, and abilities, but it is the same spirit, the Holy Spirit, that is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service. You may have, uh, you may have the ability, you may have, be very hospitable. You, you may be, you may like to uh, show hospitality to others by throwing uh, little get togethers and 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 cooking and preparing food and and just being so hospitable and, and just pouring your heart out in that that area of service but we serve the same lord god works in different ways but it is the same god who does the work in all of us a spiritual gift is given to each of us so that we can help each other and at the same time bring glory honor y'all don't hear me praise glory and honor to our lord and savior jesus christ and the father jehovah god you see the lord is working in and he works through our diversity see god never intended this to be no robot show he didn't intend to make see that's this is what people think that when they become a christian they think oh i'm gonna be oh i'm, I'm gonna be a programmed robot no you're a programmed robot right now because you you don't know it but you're a robot and you receive your instructions from satan see satan wants to have everybody Mm, Y'all don't hear me. He he has he has this this he has it where he can de be so deceitful and have you to believe that wrong is right and right is wrong. He'll have it so so sweet. He'll have it so fixed up that he'll have it to make it where you believe that man that yeah that just ain't fair. It may not be fair, but is it? biblically not fair is it something that god has said don't do that the enemy has fixed up and sweetened it up made it look all nice and purdy have you to fall for it have you to believe oh you know that is just so unfair that 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 that, that particular group that particular uh people have to have to suffer and don't have uh the benefit like 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 this and oh y'all don't know what i'm talking about okay okay so for instance i love i love all i love everybody i love all humanity right but there are things that go against what god says that i don't like because god doesn't like it it's not that he don't like the people god loves 
the LGBTQ lettuce, bacon, tomatoes, onions with sesame seed bun. All God loves y'all, right? But it is the lifestyle that God does not approve of. Because first off, how can two men or two women fulfill? Now you can tell me that you love God. And you can be so sincere in your heart, but I need to know if you love God and you're so sincere and you're wrapped up and, and the enemy has deceived you to get wrapped up in this type of relationship that is ungodly. How can you love God? And at the same time, how can you fulfill what his word says when his word says that we are to reproduce, we are to replenish the earth. So if I have a man with a man and, and a woman with a woman, how is, how can y'all reproduce and plenty replenish the earth? Cause see, this is the deceit that the enemy doesn't want you to see and realize, but if he can get you mixed up and entangled in all of this sinfulness, then you cannot fulfill what God says to do. You are now being disobedient where God says replenish the earth and multiply. You can't replenish because a man can't give birth to a child and a woman being with another woman cannot give birth to a child. Yeah, you can go get implants and, and, and all that. You can do all that. But it's still, you're not doing what, because when that child grows up, then that child going to think, oh, well, I, I got to do it this way. And, and what if the, the, the fertility treatments aren't available anymore? Then what? Then where will you get the seed from? Oh, y'all don't hear me. Let me, let me get to going. But God loves all of us and it is our diversity and our uniqueness. And the Lord works through and with our diversity. Let me get back on track because God loves you. But see, the enemy wants you to believe something totally different. And see, the Lord is working in and through our diversity and, and all of it is for the common good. Of course, this good includes things like loving others, forgiving yourself, forgiving others, reconciliation, justice and service. But the primary goal of all believers, of all Christian uh, uh, disciples of Christ is to spread the kingdom net and share the gospel invitation to salvation with others. And part of our diversity, it is our unique gifting and ability to be a part of God's plan. Here again is the apostle Paul. And this time he writes uh, to, to the church at Rome. And he says, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things and doing those things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given to you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, not just a, a teacher like myself as a, a biblical scriptural teacher, I am also a pastor, pastor and teacher. That gift uh, from the fivefold ministry goes hand in hand. Uh, but you may be a teacher in the classroom. You may be uh, a teacher or an instructor some other type of way. If you are a teacher, then teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If your gift is giving, give generously. Because the Bible also says God loves hilarious generosity. God loves a cheerful giver. If God has given you leadership ability, 
take the responsibility seriously. Let me say that again. If God has given you leadership ability, I don't care if it's in the church. I don't care if it's on the job, wheresoever it may be. Young people that are taking these leadership positions that we are promoting and putting in these positions. I need y'all to hear me. If you have been given leadership ability, take the responsibility. Let me Throw on top of that the accountability as well. So you have accountability because now you're accountable to those that you leading and those that are leading you. And you also have to take the responsibility of you leading others and being led by somebody seriously. And if you have the gift for showing kindness to others. Paul says, do it gladly so whatever your gift is i want you to do it to the best of your ability it's all needed and it's all necessary in the kingdom of god and frankly if you're going to spread the kingdom net to the furthest uh, reaches of humanity, if you're going to spread this gospel this good news out to the ends of the earth we need everybody, all hands on deck with all your diverse gifts, with all your abilities. I need you to get involved. I don't know where you may be right now, but my members, the members of HTC Harvest Temple Church of Restoration, I need you. I need your diverse gifts. I need your abilities. I need you to get involved. I. But you see, the job is, is too big. The job is too complicated for just any one of us, just one person to try to accomplish and do it alone. Jesus himself being 100 percent God and being 100 percent man. He didn't even try to do it all on his own. No. What did he do? He called. He went and got 12 disciples. Are y'all following me? Jesus said, listen, I ain't going to be here forever. I need some, I need some predecessors. I, I, I need some successors. I need, I need some people that I can pass the torch down to that. I, I can show them uh, how to do this. And then they can go out and disciple and mentor others to do the same. And we can spread this net even further with more hands on deck. Jesus didn't even do this by himself, y'all. Jesus had help and we don't stand a chance trying to do things by ourselves unless we learn to do it with each other. We, we, we can't do this without each other. And the good news is that we have not only each other in helping, but we also got Christ and guess what? He ain't going nowhere. He says, I never leave you nor forsake you. Ah, put this in your notes. He's always with you. Mm -hmm. See, he's always with us. As the gospel of Matthews comes to a close, Jesus gives the disciples some precise instructions. You see, throughout history, uh, the section I'm referring to has come to be known as the Great Commission. And in it, Jesus gives the disciples some parting instructions, which sounds much of what we've been talking about throughout this sermon series. And here's what Jesus says uh, in Matthew 28. Jesus came and he told the disciples, he says, I've been given all authority in both heaven and in earth. Therefore, go and make of all the nations go make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit teach these new disciples to obey all the commands i have given you and be sure of this that's another one of those nevertheless Nevertheless, more in spite of no matter what, be sure of this. I am with you always, 
even to the end of the age. Jesus tells the group of disciples, many of whom are pretty much in the same business. They were fishermen. They're fishers who turned into fishers of people to spread the kingdom essentially. Extend the gospel invitation, make disciples of all nations to the very ends of the earth. This has been and it continues to be the message of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ, to his gathered people, the church. And what I love about this passage from Matthew chapter 28 is how Jesus ends it. He says, and surely I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Instead of kicking us out of the provid uh, 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 the probable uh, nest and hoping we survive, Jesus commits to traveling and walking this thing out with us even to the ends of the age and not just for a moment not just for a week a month or a year but jesus is going to see it through to the very end of the age i never leave you nor forsake you he says i'm i'll stick closer to you than a brother i'm always there he goes on and tells us uh that if you decide to make your bed in hell he says guess what there am I with you also. If you ascend to the mountaintop, there I am with you always. If you go to the valley low, I'm there with you. Wherever, however, whatever you're going to do that you ain't going to do, what, whatever the case may be, listen. The psalmist said it like this. The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding what? The good and the evil. He's going to be with us always listen i'm coming to my clothes for this lesson and listen our big idea for today's lesson is simply this one of the final instructions that jesus gives to his disciples was to receive the holy spirit's power and allow that power to help them be witnesses for him all over the earth all over this world and we don't just fish it ain't just for us to fish in our neighborhood when we go soul fishing when we go fishing for people but the power of the spirit of god enables us to go fish for people at the very ends of the earth with a deep desire to see people get hooked on the messiah get hooked on Jesus Christ. He is with us always, for better, for worse, from the beginning to the end. Now what an incredible promise this is from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I don't know about you. I don't know of a king more devoted to his people than Jesus Christ. So he says, go make disciples of everybody go tell everybody about me far near right next door when he sends the spirit the holy spirit to empower us tell somebody about the good news but you see don't know about you i've been on this faith walk for a good while i've been on this journey for quite a few years and I'm hooked. How about you? I'm hooked, especially when he promises to be with me even to the end of the age. I'm ready to walk off the boat. I'm ready to drop the nets. I'm ready to continue to run after Christ. And I know without a shadow of a doubt, know that it it won't be easy i know that it's not easy i can't promise you anything different but i can tell you this it's the most incredible adventure that i have 
ever experienced in my life. It'll take you places that you only dreamed of. The mountaintops, the valley lows, it's all for the glory of God. So if you are ready, if you are ready, if you are ready to give or recommit your life to Christ, if you're committed to spreading the kingdom net and extending the gospel invitation, if you're committed to those who are close, near, and far, then let's pray together. For you see, to meet Jesus personally, we must pray what we call the sinner's prayer. But you see, grace comes when repentance is made. What is repentance? What, is it, what does it mean to repent, Pastor K? I simply want to turn from the lifestyle that doesn't honor God. I want to turn and no longer do I want to be a part of being disobedient. To the will and the way of God. When I repent, I'm, I'm simply saying, God, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know better, but now that I know better, I'm ready to do better. And see, grace comes when repentance is made and Jesus touches your heart and your sins are gone forever. Whoever you are right now, wherever you are, pray this prayer with me. And I want you to mean it. I want you to be sincere. I know you're ready. Now's the time. I'm extending the invitation to salvation. I'm spreading the net. It's the most gracious heavenly father I come to you in the mighty name of your son Jesus Christ I confess right now that I am a sinner I've lived a sinful and evil life I ask you right now Lord God forgive me I repent of the sin in my life Lord today I choose to turn away from my old life my old ways and follow you into a new life that you have for me. I ask you, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save me from my sins. I confess with my mouth. I believe with my heart that you died for me. You took my place on the cross, that God rose you up on the third day with all power in your hands. I believe, I confess. Cleanse me from all evil and all unrighteousness. I ask for your blood, Jesus, the blood of the Lamb of God, the blood, the blood of Christ. I ask that you cover me right now, cover my sins and make me and wash me till I'm white as snow. Yeah, I done messed up big time. Yeah, the enemy has tricked me to believe and deceived me to believe that I messed up so bad that you would never forgive me. But God, I know you hear me. And so I receive you into my heart, Lord Jesus, to be my Lord, my savior, my master, my all in all. From this day forth, even to eternity. I thank you for removing all my sins with your powerful and precious blood that you poured out on that cross over 2,000 years ago when you took my place. That was supposed to be me up there. But God, I thank you that you sacrificed your life because you love me so much that you gave your life so that I wouldn't have to give mine 
not in that capacity, but that I can give my life to you now for what you did so that I can have life and have it more abundantly and eternally. Thank you for giving me a whole new life. I ask Lord that you would help me to grow into the new man or the new woman of God that you have created me to be. I ask all these things in the mighty and matchless name of your son, Yahshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. Listen, maybe, maybe you met Jesus before. Maybe you did that prayer somewhere, sometime ago in your life. So you see, sometimes when we meet Jesus and we begin to follow him, uh, we fail to realize that we are no longer on, on the wide road or the broad road, but we fail to realize that we are on the narrow road and that this road can be very hard sometimes. Sometimes we are lured away from the narrow road by the cares of life, but just like the prodigal son, you wake up and you want to come home. Today is your day. And I want you to know this, that Abba Father, Jehovah God is always, always, he's always been standing in the spot, standing right there on the road where you detoured and veered off to the left, veered off to the right, wherever it is, he's still right there with open arms waiting and looking for you. He's waiting on you because he's been looking for you. He's been looking for the day that you will come back home. And when he sees your heart turn, he runs to meet you. Uh-huh. Yes, he loves you that much. You. The one that's been in that promiscuous relationship. God says, I still love you. You, the one that's turning up that bottle right now. God says, yeah, you, I, I love you too. The one that's about to make that phone call and stir up the gossip. God says, you know what? Hey, I love you too. So don't hesitate to come back by praying this prayer with your heart of repentance. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I want you to know that I missed you so much. I confess that I've fallen away from you. I, I, I backslid. I, I, I got off course. I got off track. I acknowledge that I have sinned against you. By turning my back and walking away from you, walking away from your ways and your word. But just like the prodigal son, Lord, I humbly ask for your forgiveness for the evil. I repent and I turn away from this evil life that I have been living in. I turn away and no longer do I want to participate and be a part of this lifestyle anymore. I now recommit my life to you, Lord Jesus. I want to come home. I want you to be the Lord of my life now and forever. Please forgive me for wandering and walking away from you. So sorry that I've hurt you, Lord. I ask that my sins be washed away by your precious blood. I thank you for the price that you paid so that I can be cleansed from all my sins. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit that I might live unto righteousness with you. Oh God, as David said, create in me a clean heart 
and renew a right spirit within me, O oh Lord. As for me and my house, as for me and my house this day, and forevermore I choose to serve the Lord. Thank you, Father, for restoring me into the fellowship with you. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that has washed and cleansed me. Thank you that, like Peter, I'm restored to the fellowship with you. And I ask, Lord, that we will continue our walk again. Flow through me to advance the kingdom every day of my life. I ask all these things. And I sign, seal, and deliver this request to you in the matchless and mighty name of your son, Yahshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. And I say, Amen, Amen, and Amen again. Listen. You're saved and you're restored to the fellowship of God. If you said either one of these prayers, now it's time to return back to the basics. It's time to make a commitment, a quality decision to do what you did when you first accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Or maybe you just experienced it today that you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Listen, I need you to pray. I need you to talk with the Father every day. Don't just begin your day with prayer, but I need you to speak to him just like I'm talking to you right now. I need you to talk with him and communicate with him throughout the day. Ask for guidance, help, encouragement. Acknowledge the presence of the Lord. Acknowledge the power of God and thank him and praise him continually. Listen, you need to get a Bible that you can read and understand and comprehend. I want you to get into it, read it daily. Get a, dev a daily devotional that will help you to focus on God's word. I need you to find a church that preaches, teaches, but most importantly, lives by example, the word. I need you to go there, worship God, worship him privately, and I need you to worship him in the congregation. In the meantime, in between time, The doors of the church here at Harvest Temple Church of Restoration, the doors of the church are open. So if you're ready to join the family, you want to be a part of this church and this ministry, if you feel that the Lord is assigning you here, all I need you to do is text the word member, M-E-M. BR to 
It's giving time. I like Mother Teresa's quote. Mother Teresa says that it's not about how much you give, but about how much love you put into your giving. So you're looking for the podcast that will help build your faith, right? Well, check out Keeping the Faith podcast. Why? Because it was created with you in mind to inspire, motivate, and encourage you to maintain your faith both now and during those difficult moments you're going to have in your life. Keeping the Faith podcast It can be heard on Spotify, iHeartRadio Podcast, Amazon Music, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Breaker, CastBox, Overcast, Anchor.fm, Pocket Cast, and Radio Public. So, tune in and listen to Keeping the Faith Podcast on your favorite listening device today. And remember this. Faith is expectancy. So, what are you expecting from God right now? I'm expecting you to subscribe and begin listening to Keeping the Faith podcast right about now. Peace and blessings.
Thanks for watching the Harvest Broadcast. This broadcast is an HTM production associated with Harvest Temple Ministries of Harvest Temple Church of Restoration located in Chesapeake Beach, Maryland. Remember, faith is what you do because faith is expectancy. Shalom.